The Cunyali Marker School of Marine Engineering was started with precise vision of creating eminent seafarers who can cope with the demands of the ever-growing shipping industry. This is the only marine engineering training institute which is under the direct control of the government university. It functions under the aegis of the Director General of Shipping, Government of India, Mumbai. Located in the heart of Cochin University, the Kunyali Marker School of Marine Engineering started its first four-year batch BTEC Marine Engineering program in 2003. The presence of various departments, which even have their own strong research wing, enables the cadets to acquire profound knowledge in every topic as they wish. Apart from the theoretical exercises in the closed classrooms, the students of this renowned institute have ample opportunities to undertake innovative project works. This is what helps to bring out the real talents in them and mold them as true professionals in their respective areas of specialization. Project works are an integral part of their curricula. The students show great interest in planning, undertaking excellent project works and the faculty is most supportive. Preparation of uh, project and uh, submission of the project is very important and it's a mandatory thing required for the successful completion of the BTEC degree course in marine engineering. Accordingly, this year also, we have 28 students. We have divided them into five batches and five projects were given to them. They were asked, in fact, to select the project and uh, they were willing to prepare the project, whatever we have suggested also. Unlike the last two batches, this year we thought of um, asking them to make uh, real projects because whatever they have studied, they have to understand in a much better way and if they make that as a project work and complete satisfactorily those things, whatever they have studied during the last four years, it would be better for the newcoming students, the students those who are coming, coming up for the studying marine engineering or their own junior students they will be able to understand in a much better way. Seeing a thing is much better than reading or uh, just uh, listening to a class actually, video session. We are students from Kunyali Marka School of Marine Engineering. A batch of six of us has done the project, the Voice Schneider Propeller, here. And uh, the team members include, starting from my right, Abdul Wajid, Anand V. Daniel, myself, Ashwin Sajeev, Bibin Devasi, Ashid, and Atul Basil Anthony. Our project guide was Professor Dr. P. V. Sashi Kumar, who has been of great help in developing our project. And uh, to talk about the Voice Schneider Propeller, this propeller is used where a high degree of safety is required in maneuvering. This design was actually invented over 80 years ago uh, by Voyet, who adopted a design from uh, Austrian engineer Ernest Schneider. A uh, unique feature of this propeller is its vertical axis of rotation. As you can see, this is the propeller blade and the axis of rotation is vertical. So uh, that's one unique feature. Nextly, the propeller blades, the angles can be varied and the, they are uh, self-oscillating in motion and they are balanced. So the thrust can be generated in that way. And the 0 to 360 degree face angle can be used in uh, changing its direction. Therefore, it can act as a controllable pitch propeller. That is, the pitch can be controlled. Now, what are the advantages of using this? First, as I said, the controllable pitch propeller. Secondly, it operates with on low revolutionary speed, so it has a longer life. And thirdly, the maintenance cost is very low. As my friend Ashwin Sajeev has explained earlier, this is a vertical axis controllable pitch propeller. Working principle can be simplified as this. Each blade has its own axis of rotation. So it will be oscillating on its own axis and this oscillation can be superimposed onto the common axis of rotation of the propeller. So by changing the oscillation of the blade, we can produce required thrust in required direction. So we are using a kinematic linkage here to produce the oscillation. 
the kinematic linkage used for the motion of blades is designed like this it consists of a steering control rod and a cam in the bottom by changing the position of this rod you can see the blade is rotating this is the principle of action we have actually changed the original voice standard design in the construction of this cam it is uh, made little more simple so that we can design it in its normal length actually in voice narrow propeller there is a propeller well we have actually changed its design and we are using bearings instead of normal lubrication and it is drived using a ac motor and it is coupled using belt and in original voice narrow design it is coupled using a bevel gear the ac motor drive is regulated using a regulator here and a pulley mechanism actually the rpm of the motor we have used is 1400 rpm so we have reduced it to nearly 40 rpms in actual voice narrow propeller the rpm is 40 and uh, this this low speed of rotation actually prevents the much wear and tear and maintenance problem can be reduced we have here installed a safety mesh this is uh, under the suggestion of our project guide so it enhances the safety of the project and we have lot we faced a lot of problems during designing the project first because the all parts have been designed by us so actually we needed a cnc cutters for making them but what out what we have done is that we have redesigned the wall parts so that so that we can make it in a lathe machine the advantages of voice snare propeller is that in tucks we can generate any amount of thrust in any required directions if the lever we are keeping it in the zero position we can it will not generate any thrust so during a maneuvering operation if you, if it is required to stop the propeller if it is just required to put it in the zero position This is the control module for this Voichnader propeller. We have made it like a joystick. Here we can see that forward, port, aft, and starboard position can be obtained by changing the position. This is the RPM control. We can control the RPM. Hi, and welcome to Marine Biz TV. You're watching the world's first global maritime TV channel. I'm sorry. I had problems at the port state control with my ship. With the GL classified ship.
We are uh, final year students of Kunjali Marika School of Marine Engineering uh, and I am Vignesh. I am in front of you for uh, giving an introduction about the working model of a steam turbine plant. I will introduce my batch. This is Yashwan Kumar, Varun Vishwam, this is Suman Saurav and this is Vaibhav Pandey. Our um, project guide is um, NG Nair sir and I uh, will just introduce the parts of our, uh, my turbine plant. This is the boiler, uh, turbine, uh, condenser and hot well. Nowadays, uh, the main importance of the steam turbine plant is the um, uses of uh, water, water uh, steam plant, uh, water uh, generator, and uh, wind electricity generator, and all coming in low, and uh, this steam is coming up. This is because of the economical reasons in USA and uh, Russia, and all these are mainly used. And coming days, it will be uh, coming to the maximum level, and we can produce up to uh, gigawatts of uh, electricity from this, and it will be very useful for coming days also. This is the working model of steam turbine power plant. As we all know that steam turbine power plant consists of that boiler and the turbine generator. So here we are showing all the components which are in there in that steam turbine power plant. Here we can see the boiler, here we can see the turbine condenser, hot well and the shaft of turbine is coupled with that DC generator by uh, gear. Here we can see here that all the safeties fitted on the boiler, which we can see in the steam tower turbine, steam power plant. Here we can see that the pressure gauge, the safety valve, the inlet and outlet valve, the drain valve, and all. In the boiler, we are using the heating coils. You can see here the electrical connection here. When we are putting to electrical supply, the heating coils heats the water and makes the steam. And steam, here we can see that there is a steam stop valve. By controlling that valve only, the steam will pass through a nozzle. Nozzle which is inside that, and that goes to a turbine, which is axial turbine. This is called D-level type of turbine. Here, after the expansion of steam, steam turbine rotates, and here, after expansion, steam goes to condenser. And it condenses and it will goes to hot well. So, as we all know that when turbine rotates, since it is coupled, coupled to a generator, so generator generates the electricity. Here we can see that this turbine, turbine is made of aluminium and it rotates up to 1500 uh, RPM. Here in that the working pressure of the boiler is 2 to 3 bar and the safety valve operates above the 3 bar. So here we can see that the uh, drain valve on the gauge for uh, measuring the level in boiler. Here also we can see here that condenser. Condenser is a single pass condenser which is made of copper tubes and uh, hot well after the condensing of steam we will get, get the condensed steam in the water form in hot well. From there we are taking the supply to again to boiler and it is a, a cycle, a cyclic plant. Here we can see here like this type of valve which we are using here is the ball valve for more better control. Here also in DC generator we are using is actually a small DC generator which generates the voltage up to 6 to 12 volts. Actually in this power plant we can see the three form of energy transformation. First since we are using electric coil so in actual steam turbine power plant we will use fuel like coal or nuclear uh, something. So first the fuel energy is converted to a uh, thermal energy which we, by raising the steam. Then steam goes to turbine and it rotates the turbine which means the now the thermal energy is being transformed to mechanical energy by rotating the turbine shaft. And then we can see the third and final stage of the energy transformation is that the mechanical energy is converted to electrical energy and that we can see by a bulb. We can see here in our power plant by 2 or 2.5 bar pressure we are rotating the turbine up to 1300 rpm and we are getting the voltage 6 to 8 to 12 volts.